Hey guys, what's going on? So in this video, I'll be learning about Git Stash. So Git Stash allows you to save the changes for later. It temporarily shells the changes uh, without committing so that you can focus on something else and come back later on and commit these changes. Uh, so why would you want to stash? Well, there are certain numerous scenarios where you can use stash to make Russia more better. Let me come up with a couple of them. So one scenario might be that you are in a team and working on several prototypes of a same feature and you are not quite sure which one to commit in this case you might want to keep all of them around so that later on after del deliberate discussions with your core developers you can choose one of them and commit well another scenario might be that you are working on a branch and before committing you realize that you were working on a wrong branch um, ideally in this case you would want to make use of stash to save the changes and then apply it into the right branch or another scenario would be like you are working on a branch and suddenly want to switch to another branch and do some changes there first without committing the changes in the current branch. Okay, so these were a couple of situations where you could use stash. So in simple terms, stash is used to temporarily save your changes so that you can focus on something else and come back later on and commit these changes. All right, let's get started. And I think up till now, you know the drill. You have to open up your Git bash and I'll be making use of the integrated Git bash provided by the VS code. You can open up your Git bash and work on it as both of them are the same stuffs. All right, so I have a feature on master branch, which is already committed. So if I go ahead and type git log dash dash one line, you can see that I have an initial commit and the initial commit is this exactly. Now let's suppose that I am working on a some sort of a secondary feature, uh, say def secondary feature, and while I was working on it, this is, or shall I say, this is a work in progress. My core developer calls me and says he needs my help in another branch and for another feature. So since this is a work in progress, I really don't want to commit this, or I don't want my commit history to look ugly. As you already know that for every commit you make, you have to provide a commit message and committing incomplete codes is a really bad practice. So let's see how stash can help us here. In order to stash, you go to the command line and type git stash. Although this command is enough, but it is not as descriptive as what I'm going to type next. Okay, so you type git stash and then type push dash m and the message about what you want to stash. So let's say secondary commit or feature. You will see that as soon as I hit enter, my changes are gone. But it's really not gone, but it is temporarily stashed. And since these changes are stashed somewhere, now you can go ahead and do your colleagues work, come back and then do the implementation on this later. So if I do a git status, you will see that current branch is clean. There is nothing to commit. But if you remember that we had a change that we're working on, but that's temporarily stashed somewhere and is kept somewhere safe. Now to reapply these stashed changes, say suppose you have worked on the friends or your developer code developer's branch and you came back to your master branch and you want to say suppose continue working on that. So remember that uh, the stashed changes are not committed to. So if I go ahead and type git log one line, you see that we only have one initial commit till now. So we can call that saved stash and re-implement it over here. So there are two ways to do that. First way is via git stash apply. And the second way is through git stash pop. Okay, git stash apply will apply the stash changes while keeping the stash intact. On the other hand, git stash pop will apply the most recent stash change, but will remove the stash from the temporary stash list. Don't worry if you did not understand what I just said, we will take a look into this right now. Okay, so before moving on, we might want to check out what all stashes are there in the temporary memory. Remember that we just stashed the secondary feature. So in order to view that, you can type git stash and then type list. Now you can see that something like this will be outputted. Now I'll tell you what exactly all this means. So we have something like a stashed notation and then we have the branch on which branch this stashed save belongs to. And remember the commit message that we gave? Well. That really comes in handy over here, which tells us that this stash is about the secondary feature that we, work, that we were working on, you know, working progress that we didn't commit. And yeah, one thing to notice that most recent stashes will have a stash value zero, as in this case, and the oldest one will have the highest, just like git reflog, if you remember. 
Now let's discuss the git stash apply. Now one thing to remember before we do apply is that upon doing git stash apply, you will notice that the stash will remain intact in this list and the stash changes will be applied. By default, git stash apply applies the topmost change. So here the topmost change is the stash at zero. And uh, we will cover about the multiple stashes too in this video as well. Don't worry about that. All right, so let me go ahead and do git stash apply. Now you can notice that the thing that we are working on is now back. The secondary feature is back. So the changes have been applied. But remember, these things are not committed yet. So that's why it showed us that, hey, you have this file modified and you can go ahead and commit this one. Now, remember that I told you just moments ago that this would apply the changes and in the git stash list, the changes will be still intact. So if I go ahead and type git stash list, you'd see that this thing is not removed. It's still there. So in the stash temporary memory, the stash is still available. All right. So let me go ahead and work a bit on this. So let me type this is secondary feature. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, commit this change so let me go ahead and commit type it commit dash am secondary feature done and that's committed now suppose if i'm working on another feature and let me control v all right so this is the other feature that i was working on and let me go ahead and stash this as well because this would cover the multiple stashes topic so let me go ahead and stash this if i go ahead and type git stash push dash m if type another feature if i hit enter oh we have to actually save this my bad if i save this now if i go ahead and type the above command you will notice that now this would be stashed okay so if i go ahead and do a git dash list you will notice that there are two stashes at present the first one is the most recent one that we just did right now and the second one is the previous stash that was saved Okay, so now instead of doing default git apply, which would apply the most recent stash over here, that is another feature. Let's suppose for some reason, we want that previous stash to be applied. Well, to do that, we can type git stash apply and then the copy this stash notation. So let me go ahead and copy this one. And you are done. Now, at this point, you can see that there is a merge conflict over here. That's because remember that we committed the, we completely committed the secondary feature. Now we are introducing a change, which is actually colliding with this statement, return this is secondary feature. Let me go ahead and keep the stash change instead of the committed one. So let me go ahead and delete this. And let me go ahead and delete this as well. So for those who didn't understand what exactly happened here, if you remember that we actually committed this secondary feature and when we reintroduced the stashed change, it actually conflicted with the changes that we did in the commit. We are basically trying to override the, the return statement. So remember if we, we committed that this is the secondary feature or something like that and the stash change was actually introducing something like this is dot 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 dot. It's actually conflicted with the change that we already did. That's why Git got confused that which change to apply right now. The change that we committed one or the change that is saved in the stash. Let me type git status and let me go ahead and commit dash am again secondary feature. And you are done. Plus, if I go ahead and type git stash list you notice that the stashes are still intact and i can apply these stashes anytime i want using this stash notation as i should call it okay so now let's discuss about the git stash pop this this is the another way to apply the changes so if you recall i told you that by doing git stash pop we would be we would be able to pop the most recent stash and we'll be able to apply the changes so let me go ahead and uh, create a new scenario so sort if of, let's say updated secondary something feature like that so return this is a new feature okay so suppose i am working on a feature that, that you can see right now and suddenly discover that i am working on a wrong branch so what you can do here is now stash these changes uh, let me go ahead and stash this so if i go ahead and type git stash push dash m the latest feature 
and let me go ahead and do a git stash list to verify so let's go ahead and type git stash list you can see that we have the latest feature that we're working on here okay so we now recently discovered that we are actually working on a wrong branch say we want to actually work on a branch say latest feature branch now let's quickly check out to that branch dash p latest feature now we can apply the changes via git stash pop so this is another scenario where you can use git stashing if you are working on a wrong branch and you realize that you actually wanted to work on another branch uh, you can go ahead and stash the changes quickly and then check out to that branch and then put the apply that you wanted to apply all right so if i go ahead and do a git stash list you'd see that the latest stash that we had way earlier it's gone if i go up yeah as you can see here that here we had the latest feature now upon doing pop it removes this latest or the most recent change and then applies it inside and if i do a git stash as you can see here that change is now applied and is removed from the temporary memory okay so those were the two ways through which you could do you could apply changes and one thing you might have observed that don't you think uh, the stash list is getting filled well we can clear the stash list via two ways individually or via the selected ones using the stash notation or the entire stash list in order to delete the individual stash changes inside the stash list you can use git stash drop and the stash id say suppose if i want to remove the last stash so let me go ahead and copy this and if i hit enter you'd see that if i type git stash list that stash is dropped from the memory it's completely gone from the stash temporary stash memory and we can't use it to apply the changes now another way is that you can completely delete all the stashes inside the stash list by doing git stash clear and if i do a git stash list you would see that it completely cleared the stashes all right guys so we learned a lot about git stash today so in fact we learned about git stash git stash push dash m which is actually saving your stashes inside stash memory and we did a git stash apply git stash pop the two ways in which you can apply the stash changes then we did git stash list to list what all stashes are there in the memory and then we did the two ways to drop the stashes from the memory that is git stash drop and the git stash clear so guys that's all for this video i hope you really enjoyed this video and if you really did don't forget to hit like and then subscribe to our channel this will really encourage us to do more and more and release more such videos also make sure to spread the word to others who really want to learn more about git and other related tech stacks we do really have really great playlists on other tech stacks as well and this will not only help our channel to grow but we will be able to reach out to others who are in need as well all right guys see you in the next lecture